My name is Feng Yuanzu, and uh, we're uh, glad to be here to present the our work, which is called the VEdge. It's a fast self-construct model molding for smartphones. Uh, it's a joint work with uh, Dr. Uh, Yunxin Liu, Dr. Chun Li, and uh, Dr. Yun Guang Zhang. Um, let's start it. Okay. Uh, so smartphones are very popular network devices that introduce a lot of the network traffic. Uh, compared with other devices, there's a um, uh, uh, limitation, interesting feature uh, limitation. One is uh, the power. Power is the constraint limits the development of smartphones. So in, to improve the energy efficiency, uh, we need a power model. But what is the power model? Power model basically is the uh, relationship between the power consumption and system activities. So um, just to give a concrete example here, uh, if we have a snapshot of system activity, uh, for example, if I have a 30% CPU usage, uh, 150 uh, level of the screen backlight, and uh, some other information about the background, uh, the co different hardware component. And uh, we put those information into a function which use those uh, uh, information as parameter, and we can get a calculation, for example, is uh, 1,400 uh, milliwatts, and uh, that's uh, our calculation analysis. Both of these analysis and calculation, we can provide uh, the feedback to the system side, which we can do the power management and uh, optimization. That's why the power modeling or power model is the foundation for the power management and the optimization. But how to build a power model? And uh, basically we need two categories of information. The first one is the power consumption. It basically can do two information. One is the voltage, one is discharge, uh, discharging current. The multiplication of the two value will be the power, which is the information we need for the power modeling. And another category is the resources usage, including the CPU utilization, or backlight level, or the Wi-Fi traffic. But uh, keep in mind, those information are in a controlled way. So basically, we know exactly uh, how much, uh, and, uh, or what is the workload on different hardware components. And uh, finally, we feed th this information into the regression program, and we can generate the model, whatever we want, the linear model, nonlinear model, based on the different uh, requirements. And uh, so what is the good power modeling? I have several requirements. The first one is the model should be personalized. Why? Because different phone has different power model based on uh, the study of previous work. So uh, in order to capture the various difference of smartphones uh, models, we have to run the modeling program on each phone in order to build a specific model for that devices. So why, this is why the model should be personalized. The second thing is we need a faster training. The fast training means uh, w uh, the training state will take a short time period. And uh, uh, b the reason is the user, uh, because the sometimes when the, uh, in the, uh, when using the model for a while, we will find out the hardware or software configuration have been changed. We, so we need to redo the modeling. And in that case, uh, the uh, frequent adaptation is needed. And in the training stage, uh, we, uh, the, do not want to, uh, the user activity is not to expect in the training city because it is a controlled environment. Both uh, based on these two uh, reasons, we need a faster training stage. So um, actually uh, there are uh, several categories of previous uh, just uh, according to different uh, uh, power measurement method. And those uh, two categories of the existing work do not fulfill these two requirements. Let's first introduce the first one, is external metering. The big thing can provide the uh, power information, the, the voltage and the discharging current from external hardware. For example, uh, the monsoon power meter and battery power monitors. Uh, they are fast and uh, accurate, but they have some limitation here because the, you cannot expect the end user to, uh, to using these type of devices to build a specific model for their own phone in the wild because the usually it will do in the lab and it's labor intensive and uh, you need expert uh, and knowledge uh, to install those type of devices because the, right now some of our phone are using non-replaceable non -replaceable, uh, batteries so it's very hard to install those devices on uh, smartphones. Um, 
So later uh, people come up with a new solution. It's called self-metering. It basically provides the voltage and current information from internal battery interfaces. So basically it's a hardware inside the phone can provide the uh, voltage information, current information to the upper, la uh, upper layer, for example, operating system and applications. And uh, uh, it seems so the problem, but have some disadvantages. The, actually, a large number of existing phones do not support uh, this method because their battery in interface only provide the voltage information. They do not provide the current information. So if we want to use this method, we have to uh, uh, use this method on the phone, which can provide this both the information. So there's a self-art of that the self uh, metering method called uh, self-metering with SOD. SOD means the state of discharge to solve this problem. Basically, they can run on most of phones. Uh, what they do is uh, leverage the SOD. So what is SOD? SOD is the percentage of energy left on the smartphones. Uh, for example, if you have a 40 charge phone, you have a green bar on the corner of your screen uh, indicating you have 100% SOD, and if you use it well, it probably drop back to the 70% SOD. So it's, uh, it's probably very familiar to, the, uh, to everyone if you have a smartphone. So uh, basically, you can calculate the power using the SOD change, avoiding, uh, uh, avoiding uh, try to uh, avoiding the use of the current information. But they have some limitation. First, it's very slow. They don't have 100 di uh, discrete SOD method, uh, values. So if we, you want to observe just a one value change, you probably take a long, long time. So uh, another thing about this method is not accurate. So how do we solve this problem? Do we have an alternative way to do the power modeling? to get the voltage information and current information in a fast and accurate way, and we come over method. So let's introduce the V-edge metering. Uh, so here, the intuition here is the, the smartphone are battery-powered uh, devices. So wh why do we uh, leverage the battery characteristic to solve this problem? Here, the battery uh, characteristic we are using is the uh, instantaneous current change lead to instantaneous the output uh, voltage change. So what does it mean? I will introduce detailed in the following slides. Uh, so let's first look at the very simple equivalent uh, circuit of the battery and smartphones. And uh, you have uh, the OC of V, which is the open circuit uh, uh, voltage. It representing how much energy left in the smartphone. And, and also, uh, just keep in mind, it is a relative constant for a time short time period. Uh, short, short time period. And uh, there's R representing the internal resistance inside the battery. Um, so uh, if there's a current change on the circuit, how the, uh, the battery circuit responds to this change? Let's look at the next slide. And uh, before I introduce the details, I first want to mention the, the V output. The V output is output uh, um, a voltage to the smartphone, which also is the the reading value provided by the battery interfaces is the uh, value we get from upper layer, the operating system and applications. So let's say if there's a current change on circuit, if you uh, cause the uh, uh, increase the voltage drop on the internal resistor R, and since the VCR is a relative constant during the short time period, it means uh, we can observe a decrease output voltage uh, from the battery interfaces. So A means there's a relationship between the voltage drop on the uh, output uh, voltage and the relationship uh, and the current change on the circuit. Let's put this, uh, this equation in another way. It basically means it's the linear transform between the current change and the voltage change. Here, the voltage change we represent as the V edge. I'll give a detailed introduction of V edge in the next slides. Okay, so here, since we have a relationship between the uh, v, uh, v edge and the current change, and uh, this linear relationship can give an uh, estimation of the current change using the V edge change. And based on that, we come up a way to estimate the current using the V edge method. 
So A means we can infer the current just from the voltage dynamics. We do not need to use other information. Just the voltage information can lead to the current uh, and uh, uh, power consumption of the smartphone. Okay, so let's introduce what is the VH. The VH basically means the voltage difference between uh, before and after and a uh, system operation. Uh, let's give you, uh, let me give you a very concrete example here. Along the timeline, if the CPU changes their workload from idle state to let's say it's 30% uh, CPU usage, we will see uh, uh, discharging current increase on the circuit. Um, and that, because of that, we immediately see a voltage drop of the uh, output voltage from V1 to V2. The difference between V1 and V2, which is the V1 minus V2, is the VH. And uh, also we will see a similar difference when uh, the CPU workload uh, uh, back to the idle case we'll see a voltage rise here. So to back up this theory, we'll give you a one concrete example here. This is a real experiment showing the uh, voltage uh, uh, dynamics of smartphones, battery smartphone on the battery. Uh, if we change the current change at the uh, two different places. So we, th this figure match the, uh, the, uh, uh, the example I give to you. So. It definitely means the, it have the very uh, good relationship between the current change and the voltage changes. Okay, so what is the good advantage of the VH? It is accurate because the stable linear relationship between the VH change and uh, the current change. Well, we can uh, do a one-to-one -one mapping from the VH to the current change. So basically get the idea uh, what is the current change just based on the VH changes. And uh, we test on eight different uh, batteries for two type of smartphones. Uh, uh, we, for this eight battery, we change the different uh, current to see uh, or what is the VH change and to try to draw the linear uh, fitting for these two type of uh, uh, variables. And their figure showing uh, the very good linear relationship fitting between the VH change and uh, the current change. Um, so it means that it's a very stable linear relationship, so we can infer the current change from the voltage changes. The second thing about the uh, good thing about the VH is the very fast. So for example, on Nexus, we can get a uh, uh, power consumption for one operation uh, just uh, within one second for VH method. But if we're using the SOD method, it may take you 15 minutes. So that's the huge difference there. And another thing is the it is very sensitive. The VH can uh, detect the 4% uh, CPU usage with 100% uh, uh, successful ratio. Keep in mind, since we only use a VH in the training stage, in the controlled environment, we definitely can uh, tweak the uh, hardware uh, usage more than 4% uh, CPU usage. So it's very easy to detect this uh, using VH uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the current change. And it's uh, uh, fine-grained in the resolution, so definitely more than 100 discrete values compared with the SOD method. Uh, so, mm, so here I introduce uh, what is the, uh, uh, based on VH, how we do the power modeling. So here we also have two switch, just uh, mapping uh, the generic power modeling uh, I just introduced in the beginning. They have a training stage, and they have the estimation stage. And in the training stage, we need the power measurement from the VH system, and uh, we use the power model generator to generate different models. I'll give you the, the four model we built uh, in the next slides. And the for the next part is estimation stage. And basically, we um, collect all the hardware information uh, or system activity from the lower layer and to calculate what is the uh, power consumption for each process of applications. And uh, we'll intercept the system call and uh, to get the system uh, parameter of different events. So it's the uh, event-driven design, it involves a, a low overhead. So basically on the power, after the power profiler, you know who will consume how much power on where. Basically, if, for example, if application using uh, 
uh, spend the 30% of the uh, uh, energy on, on CPU and 70% energy on the storing, we will know that. So let's look at the four model we introduced. One is the CPU, basically it's a linear function of the frequency and the utilization. And the second one is the, is the screen. It's the function of uh, backlight level and every pixel colors. Here we have to uh, consider the, uh, the uh, every pixel color because uh, if you have the, the, because the different color will give you different power consumption on screen, even you have the same back lab uh, level. So that's why uh, here we introduced uh, this in for the online modeling. Here uh, our model is the one of so specific uh, power model, uh, screen power model for the online modeling. And uh, we also consider Wi-Fi, uh, also consider GPS models. I'll give you the evaluation uh, later. Uh, and also, uh, so based on the evaluation, we first uh, introduced, uh, give the uh, present the value of the training overhead because the, the one of most important of V edge is fast. So here, we, uh, in order to build our model, we have 400, more than 400 training program. Uh, if we use the edge, we only need 1.2 hour to build a home, uh, to run all those training programs and build a whole model for different components and the, for the whole phone. But if you're using the SOD method, it may take more than 100 hours. So it's the more than 100 times faster than the SOD method. Uh, the, then we give a evaluation on the accuracy. We, 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 uh, the metric we use here is the real uh, energy consumption. So this is actually the more stricter than directly compared with the model parameters. And uh, we uh, compare the, uh, have an evaluation on the component level or different component uh, models and uh, real applications. Um, so for the accuracy, we compare our VH method with the two other methods. One is uh, the ground truth measurement. Basically, we run a program and directly measure the power consumption in the real time to see how much energy has consumed by this the program. And also, we uh, compare with the external metering-based power modeling. Just what I mentioned in the, inter uh, in the very beginning part, uh, the external metering-based uh, power modeling is very accurate. But the things is not uh, um, uh, feasible or flexible to do it in the wild, so um, uh, it's not easy for end user to do that. But uh, but it's very accurate, so we compare with that to see what's the accuracy of our problem modeling online power models. So uh, let's give you two uh, component model first here. This is the CPU and the screen. We will see uh, here that uh, all. The, uh, the, the dark green uh, bar is the VH method. So we see uh, VH method is very close to the other two methods for these uh, two components. So it represents uh, the difference is very s uh, small and uh, the accuracy is high for the uh, VH method. So I give you a summary of these two components. The error means the, what's the, er the VH estimation error compared with the ground truth measurements. And uh, we also uh, give the difference. The difference means the, what's the VH value difference compared with the external uh, metering based uh, power modeling. We will see the error is within 6%, the difference within the 4%. That represents that we have very good accuracy for those two type deployments. And uh, also we give uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the other two power, uh, component model for the Wi-Fi and the GPS and the uh, real application. Here we consider the web browsing, the video playback, those are real applications. And uh, this is a summary of the errors. And the things uh, we just keep in mind, we just using those implementation to demonstrate the accuracy of the VEdge for providing the uh, power consumption estimations. We do not provide a very uh, new uh, power modeling theme. So here we only consider very simple the Wi-Fi and the GPS model. So that's why they introduced some errors. But for the difference between the VS method and the external uh, uh, metering based power mo uh, modeling, the difference is so uh, not high. And also for real applications, uh, we have this uh, very uh, things, the, the error estimation. And so the key, uh, so the key thing, uh, concluding the key thing that we have a uh, key finding, the current change can be determined from the instantaneous uh, voltage changes. 
And uh, based on this, uh, we come up with a new self-construct power modeling, uh, just based on the re uh, voltage readings. It works on most phones, and it's uh, very fast, and the accuracy is good, and it's very sensitive. So based on that, we uh, implement our v edge method and demonstrate the effectiveness in power modeling. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, this is Mian Dong from Samsung Electronics. Uh, mm -hmm. Very nice talk. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that the way you are calculating the current uh, requires the value of the uh, resistance in the battery pack. So, but the resistance is very sensitive to temperature. So I wonder if you have uh, any evaluation on that or have you considered any mechanism of your design to compensate the temperature change? Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, our method, it, it depends on whether you want to know the absolute value of the uh, current. Here, uh, if, if, uh, if for the purpose of the power management optimization, we need to know just the percentage of the, for example, for application, how much energy has been consumed by different uh, carrier components, and for the whole system, how much energy has have been consumed by different applications. For that purpose, you do not need to know the absolute value. Only know is the relative value. So you do not need to transfer the V edge power uh, measurement system to the traditional power management system. Actually, you can, uh, I didn't mention in the slide, you, uh, you can refer more detail in the paper. First, uh, we have a way to transfer the V edge measurement system, uh, including the V edge uh, power, V edge energy, into a traditional power management system, which is including the traditional power, which is the uh, uh, the, the current time, the voltage, and the, the, uh, the, the energy, which is the power time, the time. So the first thing, we have a way to do that. The second thing is if you, the purpose is just to do the power um, um, uh, management and optimization, you do need to know the absolute value, just uh, using the V edge value to do the management and optimization. Uh, did okay. I answer your questions? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Chuck, NEC Labs, uh, Princeton. Uh, now, the <laughs> V-edge sampling, uh, you're doing at one hertz. So uh -huh. if the CPU usage, CPU bursts are, say, in the order of a few milliseconds, but happening frequently, so will the error in your measurement be very high? Uh, that's also a very good question. It's the, I, I just mentioned that in our implementation, the V-edge only need to provide the, the, uh, the power information to the training state. So for the training state, the whole system is under control. So you can control, you, you can stay, for, for example, for CPU, you can uh, put it in the 30% usage for a long time period, so it's not a problem. And when you use it in the estimation stage, uh, since uh, because of our uh, event-driven design, it basically is very accurate. Uh, I, I long, I, uh, it's uh, it's uh, close, so, so it's the, within the uh, very accurate in the fine grain, and uh, as long as the events occur, and they will be trapped by our program and we'll get the information, so it's a fine grain. Thanks. I think Chuck asked a question very similar to mine, so okay. that answers my question. Okay, cool. Thank you very much.